Hello everyone and welcome back. It's already August the 1st. And we're into another really warm day today. Not quite as warm as the last couple weeks though. Uh, it's about 27 degrees. Feeling like 30 or 31 with the humidity. So it's not too bad. Today I wanted to give you guys an update on my periwinkle pre-bonsai. You can see it's really come back this year. I've got it in a pot. Um, I didn't do a video of this, but way back in very early spring, I took it out of the flower garden that I put it in. Uh, I think it was uh, about in the middle of August last year to kind of get it to come back for the winter time, and it did start to come back. And then it went dormant, and early early spring, just last spring, I put it in this pot. And it's really come back, and it's looking good. Okay, here it is on the ground. You can see it a lot better here. Still not the greatest, sorry about that. We got a lot of green in the background here. I turn it around here's the other side you can see we got a lot of growth out on it which is really good and it's been doing very well I'm thinking next spring I'll be doing more work on this. I think I'm going to just let it grow out for the rest of this year. Let it get a lot of its strength back. And then we can start more working more on the structure next spring. Needless to say, it's going to be pretty interesting. Well, I'm not too sure if you guys will remember, but I had it in this uh, raised bed over here. It was right down in here. So I had it down in there. I took it out very early last spring, and these other flowers uh, quickly took over which wasn't a bad thing. I did want to get it into its own larger pot. So that's it for the periwinkle. And beside it here, I have my Manitoba maple. I'll just bring it down from the bench here so it's easier to see. It's coming along quite well. When I first started this, this tree as a pre-bonsai, it was just a very, very small, small tree that I got from the side of my house. Can pull out some of the weeds. I do have some nice surface roots developing there. We're starting to develop some taper in the trunk now, which is good. And again, we're just going to let this grow. And next spring, 
we're going to be taking this away back again. So I just repotted this last year. I think it was a little over a year ago. In the spring it would have been, so about a year and a couple months ago. So I'm just going to keep it in this pot for at least another year, if not another couple years. And I did work on the roots a little at that time. Here's a, uh, a little cedar tree that I started as a cutting from my cedar hedge. It's doing really well. As you can see here, we got new growth. New growth this year on it. Last year it really didn't do a whole lot. This is, uh, from my cutting, this is just a little over a year old. So it would have been a, a year ago last spring, so it's about a year and a couple months old. Started from a cutting. It's come along well. Another thing that uh, come up this year, well, this is another prairie winkle cutting. Just going to pull the weeds out of it. I've had this for quite some time, actually. I started this from a small little cutting that was uh, quite small. I've had this now for probably about two years. I don't think nothing's going to come about of these little cuttings. I can't even remember what these were. Maybe from my myrrh maple. Yeah, so another cutting that's doing really well from a year ago. A little over a year ago. Is my crab apple cutting. So you guys can see here, it's doing very well. Let me take the weed out so it's not mistaken here. here. I'll pull these other little cuttings out that didn't make it. Maybe I'll leave this one in here. So anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's worked out very well. That's the only cutting that came back this year. Last year when I overwintered my trees in my shed, um, this just had a, a few leaves on it still. And then they fell off, obviously. There they are inside the pot. And I didn't know whether it was going to make it or not. And... Um, this spring it started shooting new leaves and now we've got that uh, extended growth on it on the top so that's excellent that's that just all came out this year that's about three inches long so yeah that, uh, that's really good and over beside these trees here um, I have an apple tree growing this was started from a seed um, is about two years ago I think this was started from a seed but uh, this is actually going to be going into the ground so I'm going to be planting this tree in my yard so um, so that's what's happening with this one and it's growing very well I wanted to show you guys a couple small cedar trees that I got Last year when I was on vacation, this one here did not make it. This one did, however, and it's doing very well. I'm not too sure if you guys can see that very well. It's quite neat. It was growing up and around a rock. I just uh, kept it as it is and planted it out the back of my property here hoping it would uh, survive and it has which is good it's got a couple of these longer branches here 
and it has done some growing this year which is good it's growing a couple inches at least same with this one here it's growing a couple of inches so that's good next spring I will be putting this into its own pot probably just a nursery pot and we can start to develop it from there it's already got some nice crackly bark on it on its trunk who knows how old it is because they can be pretty deceiving that looks like it could only be maybe five years old or something like that six years old but it could even be a little older than that There's not a lot of taper in the trunk yet though, so it probably isn't really old, but probably no older than 10 years old anyway. The sun's so bright I don't think that you guys can even have a good view of this right now. We'll come back to it another time. Now the other update that I wanted to do is my weeping cherry. As you can see, it is not doing good at all. You can see here if we look down at the roots that many of them have been chewed off. Unfortunately. When I brought it out here in the spring, um, this one and a couple other ones were sat underneath the bench down here so that they could uh, be out of the sun and slowly I was going to be bringing them out into the sunlight down near the end of the bench here and then gradually come up on top of the bench here to get more sunlight and I put them down there so that you know the sun wouldn't uh, wouldn't kill it unfortunately the rabbits got to it and uh, yeah it uh, it killed it before the sun did so that's unfortunate I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to cut it out just yet. We'll leave it go. The one thing I am lucky about is somehow it still has some life in it. It shot out a new small little wee trunk or a branch out of the base of the existing trunk down inside so I'm hoping that uh, I can work with this I'm gonna wait maybe till about the end of August just the end of this month and if I don't see any new growth on this tree at all then I'm just gonna end up cutting it off and then what I'll do is I will train this to grow straight up and this will become our new tree so after this, I will not be putting any more of my trees on the ground unless I know for sure the rabbits will not be enjoying them. Obviously they, they probably didn't know what this was, but they experimented with it anyways. It obviously didn't taste too good to them because they didn't go much further than this, which is good. Otherwise they could have eaten the whole bottom off here. So, yeah, I basically lost all the growth on this. And nothing, nothing came back about of it. It's been about three weeks now, maybe four weeks, like close to about a month now. So I'm probably safe to cut this off. But uh, I'm just going to let it grow one more month. It's not going to hurt anything. 
and I'll cut this off and train this to grow vertically and this will become our new tree. <laughs> I'll just have to wait a lot longer that's all to de develop a trunk and thing so that's okay. Yeah it won't be going on the ground anymore. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I got a, a bee that's tunneled into one of my pieces of firewood here. And it's not much not much smaller than a, um, a yellow jacket. A little bit smaller than a yellow jacket and it kind of resembles a, uh, a bumblebee. But you can see him, he comes to his doorway here. And he's tunneling it out further. He's been going in and out of there now for about a week. And he's chewing all the wood away from the entrance of his tunnel there. So he's probably hollowed in there. I don't know if he's just uh, homing in there himself or if he's actually planning on starting a nest in there. I'm not too sure, but I've been watching him. I don't know if you guys can see him or not. He was right near the entrance and now he's gone back a little wee bit. I'm just going to tap on the wood and just see if maybe he'll come out. Maybe he thinks I'm a woodpecker so he's he's really disappeared here. You can see some of the wood shavings here from him, right here, where he was tunneling in there. Well, we'll leave him go for now, but hopefully I'll see him going in and out of there sometime, and I'll try and get some footage of him. Well, the rain barrels are starting to look a little empty. I've still got about a quarter of a barrel in this one here. And tonight and tomorrow we're supposed to get a fair bit of rain with some possible heavy thunderstorms. So that'll be nice. Come on rain. We need more rain again. Things are starting to look a little brown. Except for the garden and my trees. Well, you guys have a fantastic day, and we'll see you soon.